Welcome back. This is my third video on polynomials. If you have any questions, email me at absolutemathematics at yahoo.ca. Alright, so this video we're going to be talking about the fundamental theorem of algebra. And it states that every polynomial of degree n greater or equal to 1 has exactly n linear factors. Okay, so I put down an example to help demonstrate what this means. So if you don't know, degree is a synonym for um, the highest power in your polynomial. So if we look at our example here, um, the highest power we have is 2. So that has to be our degree. So this is a polynomial of degree 2. And that also means that n is equal to 2. And because n equals to 2, if we look at our theorem, it says that a polynomial of degree greater or equal to 1, and we have degree 2, has exactly n, and our n is 2, so this polynomial must have two linear factors. Okay, so if we plug in 1, we can see that 1 squared minus 1 is equal to 0, so we get 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, so this is true, so that must be a factor, well x is equal to 1, so then x minus 1 must be a factor. And then if we plug in minus 1 squared minus 1 equals to 0, we still get 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. So 0 is equal to 0, this is true. And therefore x is equal to minus 1, and x is minus or plus 1 is a factor as well. So as you can see, our assumption, we assume that this had two linear factors because the degree was 2 and n equals 2, so this must have two linear factors, and we found them. x minus 1 and x plus 1 are two linear factors. Okay, so let's move on to some questions to help exercise what we just learned. <coughs> so my first question states, what is the degree of the following polynomials? So our first polynomial is p of x, and it has x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. So we're looking for the degree. And if you remember, the degree is the highest power within the equation. So we have x squared plus 2x plus 1. So we have x to the 2 and x to the 1. So obviously our highest power is 2, and therefore the degree of this polynomial is equal to 2. Next, we have x to the fifth minus 4x squared plus 3x minus 2, and we look for the highest power again on the variables. Remember, you're only looking for the variables, so even if my 2 was to the 10, we don't consider this because this can actually be simplified to, I believe it's like 1024, something like that. So you don't count these degree or these powers if they're on a coefficient. The degree has to or the power has to be on a variable. So we only look at our variable and our variable is x. So we have 5, 2, and 1. So the degree of this polynomial is the highest power, which in this case is 5. So the degree here is equal to 5. And our last question, we have p of j. <laughs> is equal to j to the 2011 plus j to the 2010 minus 16j squared is equal to 0. So again, we look for the highest power on our variable, and in this case it's j. And we only have j's, so it doesn't matter. And the highest power we see is 2011. So the degree, although this question is a bit exaggerated, it is 2011. Okay, let's move on to some other questions. How many linear factors do the following... I spelled following wrong. <laughs> Apparently engineers can't write. Um, polys have, the polynomials. So we have our polynomial p of c is equal to c cubed plus 24c minus 2c plus 6. So if we want the number of linear factors, remember there's n linear factors in a polynomial and a poly, and n 
is the degree of the polynomial. So all we have to do is find the degree, like in the last questions, and we know how many linear uh, factors there are. So we look for the highest degree of c, and we see that we have c to the 3, c to the 1, and c to the 1. So the highest, the degree of this polynomial is equal to 3, and therefore n is equal to 3, and therefore we have three linear factors. Moving on, we have p to the z is equal to z16, z to the 16 plus 72 z to the 6 plus z is equal to 0. So we look for the highest power, which is z to the 16, so our degree is equal to 16, which means our n is 16, which means we have 16 linear factors. Okay, how about this question? We have x to the 1, which means our highest power is of degree 1, which means n is equal to 1, which means this has one linear factor. This has one linear factor. And because it only has one linear factor, and it's already x to the plus 2, this is the linear factor. So you wouldn't have to break this down into factors at all. I'm going to put one more question, just to see if you remember. If we have x to the 5 plus 17x to the 4th plus 3x squared minus um, 5 to the 10, what is our degree? Well, let's say the degree is, we look for our highest power, it's 10, right? No! <laughs> Because remember, we only look for the highest degree on the variable. And 5 is not a variable, it's a coefficient. So we ignore this, even though it's to the power of 10, and we only look at the variables, and we see that 5 is actually our degree. So we have a degree of 5, which means n is equal to 5, which means we have 5 linear factors. Dot, dot, dot. All right, I hope this helped. Remember, if you have any questions, absolutemathematics at yahoo.ca. Thanks.